Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to start getting into the meat and potatoes of our lab build. One big part of building labs, the home labs, is automation. We are able to spin up a ton of VMs or one specific VM in a matter of seconds. And this is not possible if you try to do everything manually. So for our lab build, we are going to be automating our builds with Vagrant, which works very well with VirtualBox. So download Vagrant for whatever platform you have. I am currently running on Windows, so you can download AMD64 here. It's going to be an MSI file. Just run through the prompts as usual, and you have Vagrant installed. So Vagrant is very easy to get used to using. It took me just one crash course, and I was able to get used to most of this stuff fairly quickly. Before we get into the commands, what I want to do first is make a directory, which is what we're going to be using as our base directory for the VM we want to make. So I shall make a directory called test VM, cd under that, clear my screen. And then so far it is empty as you can see. The first thing I want to touch on are some of the commands for a vagrant. So I'll just open up this directory and code. And as you can see, we have nothing here. Just open up a random file. So to initialize the directory you are working in, to be able to run a vagrant box, they are called vagrant boxes. You want to vagrant init and then the name of the box, right? If you Google search vagrant boxes, you will end up at this location, right? This URL, this page, whatever it is, I'm forgetting what it's called. But if you Google search vagrant boxes, you can navigate to this page. It's called vagrant cloud. I'll leave a link in the description below. But basically, this is where all your vagrant boxes lie. So this is how you would initialize a box. If you wanted a LAMP stack, you can search for a LAMP stack. And I spelled this wrong, so there are no results. But there's Explore, which has Ubuntu 14, which is pretty old. Don't use that. But there's basically a bunch of machines that have already been configured by a bunch of other people. What we want to do to test this out is to install Ubuntu. And so I think Ubuntu 18 works well if you want to put a machine on TryHackMe. So we'll use that. We'll search for Ubuntu 18 and it's called Bionic 64. So we would initialize the folder with the command vagrant init and then Ubuntu the forward slash is important. Bionic 64. That's how we do it. Once it spins up, we can SSH into the machine using the following command which is Vagrant SSH. It uses a key-based system. It literally just authenticates and you can jump into your machine and start doing whatever configurations you need to do. Before you can actually Vagrant SSH, you'd want to Vagrant up, which is then spinning up your machine, configuring it, and running everything that's in your Vagrant file. And a Vagrant file is literally just gonna be the configuration of the machine. Vagrant up, you can use Vagrant destroy, if you make a mistake or if you just want to delete the machine, that's how you do it. Then Vagrant Halt to pause the instance. Vagrant Vagrant Reload if you make any changes to the configuration file. So let's actually run this. We now have a vagrant file. I think I can delete this. I don't need that anymore. We now have a vagrant file, which looks like a lot of gibberish because it is. It is mostly useless stuff. So I have a template I use so we can clear this out. Then I can paste my stuff here. So we used Bionic. We want to make sure this stays consistent. We used Bionic and we want to name the VM test VM. This is part of the initialization of the machine. And then this is the host name. It's going to be called test VM. Don't touch this. I have no idea what it does. It's literally just naming our provider, which is virtual box. And then you can comment this out or not. I want to give this IP address to the machine. You might get an error depending on your virtual box configuration, but it'll give you the side range and then you can use whatever side range it gives you to assign an IP address to your machine. 
a static IP address. And then we have the folder settings, right? It says the config VM synced folder. It is set to current working directory slash data, which we do not currently have. So we should make that. So we have a data folder, which is where we're going to house all of our installation scripts, any zip folders, any binaries we want to put on the machine as it boots up. This is where we would put them. It is currently synced to var www.html on the machine that's going to boot up and then the mount options just for secure mounting. And then if you wanted to put all your installation commands, such as updating the repositories, installing Apache, installing other stuff, if we wanted to put that in this same vagrant file, you do that over here. But we want to use an installation script, which we are going to build up on the side. So we have the path. It should be. Actually, we do not want it in data. So we have the installation script, which you should make in our base folder. Call it install.sh, but we want it in the base folder, not in data. Yeah, so there's nothing in data. So we can go back to the Vagrant file. So this is basically it. If you want to get a lot more in-depth of Vagrant, I'll leave a link in the description for the documentation and you can get your hands dirty with Vagrant. But this is basically it. Since we've already initialized our VM, but before we boot it up, I want to update the machine and install Apache just so you can see the power of automation and how quickly things can boot up without having to do much manually. So the first thing we want to do is apt update and Vagrant automatically runs as root. So you don't have to type sudo unless you want to. So this is just updating repos. Then make sure you put comments in your stuff so that you know what you're doing or other people know what you're doing. If you ever send them the installation script. So installing Apache, which is pretty simple. Apt install Apache 2. And then after installing Apache 2, it probably will be running, but we want to system CTR restart Apache 2. Just good practice, I guess. At this point, we'll be ready to boot up an Ubuntu 18 virtual machine that has, that has Apache running within a couple of seconds, which is pretty great. You don't have to start doing everything manually, downloading and installing ISOs, etc. So now I want to run the command vagrant up to actually boot up the machine, install everything, update, and I'll be back in a couple of seconds. Okay, so I'm back and this is done running, but it seems like we have an error here. It says failed to restart Apache 2 service, which means it actually did not install Apache because we made a mistake here. We want to append the dash Y so that it doesn't prompt us for the installation. But for now, if we want vagrant SSH, we are able to log into the machine. There we go. We are user vagrant at test VM. If we run host name, we can see the name test VM, which we gave it. And then does it have, oh, it actually does have net tools. So it has our private interface and then the static IP address that we gave it, which is 192.56.10, yada, yada, yada. But what we want is Apache. So I shall exit out of this if I can type exit and then Vagrant destroy this box. It's going to prompt me. I'll type yes. The box has been destroyed and hopefully this time it can actually install Apache since we put the dash Y. Let's run this again. Okay, I'm back and this time it looked like it worked because if you look back here, we now have an index.html file. But if you noticed what I did, I had to destroy the machine and then rebuild it just to install Apache. You do not have to do that. I just did that to prove a point that we can install a bunch of stuff in one go when the machine boots up. If you ever get an error in your installation and one part of your installation, I suggest you SSH into the VM, copy the command you ran or the command that gave an error and then paste it into the terminal and try running. It might be a typo, it might be something else. And then once it works, you can then throw it back in, into your installation script. You don't have to keep destroying a machine and then rebuilding it because once you have 
60 lines in this it's gonna take a couple of minutes to actually spin up so you don't have to keep destroying and rebuilding your machine i hope you get my point but anyways now that we have our vm we can vagrant ssh into the machine but that is not gonna work because i mistyped that and while that is running we can navigate to the ip address if we can remember it if we i have config apache is running on one of these and hopefully it is this one and as you can see we actually do have apache apache 2 ubuntu default page and this is just the power of automation we have an ubuntu machine running in a matter of minutes instead of having to install the iso install apache manually and do all that other crazy stuff which we usually did we are not going to be using vagrant to automate most of our builds that is it for this video i will catch you in the next one